and welcome to the Episcopal Church of St. Andrew and Matthew in the city of Wilmington, Delaware. My name is the Reverend David Andrews and I'm the rector of this parish and it is my pleasure to welcome you on this, the first Sunday of Advent. During the season of Advent and, go, and moving into 2021, we will be uh, participating in a new outreach project to help with food insecurity in, the, in Wilmington. If you are interested and would like to, you may contribute either food or money donations to a local food pantry or food bank in the city of Wilmington or the state of Delaware. When you do so, please make sure that you mention it that it's from Sam. Also, we are coming to the end of our stewardship campaign for 2021, and if you have not yet pledged for 2021, I hope you will do so soon, as the 2021 budget will soon be developed. The season of Advent is a wonderful season of the church year. It's the first liturgical season of the year, and we hope you enjoy this first Sunday of Advent celebration. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep shadow, on them a light has shined. Today we light the first candle of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a special meaning. The first candle represents hope. Eternal God, as we await the coming of our Savior, give us the courage to hope. Give us the grace to see your plans of redemption for our lives, for this community, and for the world. Through Jesus Christ, the source of our redemption and hope. Amen. Amen. of darkness and put on the armor of light. 
now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility. Then in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life and world. Through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when the fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds and we did not that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for Him. When uh, when you meet those who gladly do right those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hands of iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hands. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give my thanks to God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep away, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep. When he comes suddenly, and what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Father, we are the clay, 
and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. These verses are from our first lesson this morning from the prophet Isaiah. We are all the clay, and God is the one who forms us, and, of all, and all of us are the work of God's hand. These words of hope at the conclusion of a lesson that is full of lament offered by the prophet. Today, as we begin the season of Advent, we can relate to Isaiah this morning. Nine months ago next week, before the third Sunday in Lent, we held our last Sunday morning celebration of the Holy Eucharist on March 8th. Nine months later, we begin the season of Advent, and this year, Advent feels and looks very different than a year ago. For the last nine months, we have been encouraged to wear a face mask in order to show this, slow the spread of the virus so that we can not only keep ourselves safe, but also to make sure others stay safe as well. Sadly, we have seen since the beginning of the pandemic in March, individuals who do not take this seriously as they refuse to wear a mask and insist that they have the right to do whatever they please, regardless of whether or not others might suffer as a consequence. We have seen the devastation that this reckless behavior has caused. Hospitals are at full capacity. People once healthy are seriously ill. And we've heard the stories of folks who have died, and they are all heartbreaking. The virus has taken its toll on people's ability to work as companies shut down in the spring as they laid off millions of workers. Schools have had to make hard choices about how to educate their ki our kids, virtual or in-person classes. Because of the recent surge, many districts have returned to online classes, which has caused stress and anger of parents who want their kids to socialize with one another. With all of this stress, add to the number of black men and women in this country who have been murdered by the police the last nine months. The country at the moment is at a tipping point, and none of us know what to do. Last week, we received a letter from the wardens and me that we have made the decision to close the church for all events except for our pre-recorded worship services. This was done in order to keep people safe and that our community partners have been made aware of this decision and we are working with them to see how we might assist them during these difficult times. <coughs> None of this is easy and to be honest, I have shed tears and lamented that we've had to do this. I understand and support this decision, but that does not make it any easier. Ministry and liturgy is still happening at SAM during this time that we are apart. As I mentioned in the announcements, one way that we can all help those who are in distress is by offering food support. That is, to contact a pantry or the Food Bank of Delaware, either make a monetary donation or bring food to help those who are in need, or to a manual dining room, or the breakfast mission. Any place that is struggling with food, to provide food for those who are homeless, please let us all do our part to help during this time. So that though we are closed, we are still open for ministry to live out the vision and mission of this parish. On this first Sunday of Advent, the lessons speak to what is happening today even though they were written over 2,000 years ago. The beginning of the lesson of the, from the prophet Isaiah is a lament the prophet offers as he looks over the city of Jerusalem. 
This portion of Isaiah was written at a time when the people of Israel were allowed to come back to Jerusalem from exile. They were full of expectations to see the Jerusalem they imagined they would see when they returned, only to be disappointed to see how the city had been in disrepair because of the exile. Listen to the opening words of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when a fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. Where are you, God? Isaiah seems to be saying. Show us your mighty hand at the work, as your work among us, as you did when you delivered the people of Israel out of Egypt from slavery. Where are you, God? We ask for your help, and you are silent. What are we to do? How are we to live without you? Isaiah is speaking truth that everything is not okay. Jerusalem will need to be rebuilt, and who is going to do that? The people are impatient, and they long for the return to life they knew before they went into exile. It's not going to happen. But Isaiah's message is not all focused on judgment, as the verse I began with tells us. Isaiah is being honest with the people of Israel, and he is inviting them to shed their own personal to shed their own personal ideas of who God is, and replace them with the reality of who God is. That God has created us and loves us, and has tenderly molded us into his likeness, like a potter with a clump of clay. The season of Advent is about our coming home to God, but not the God we imagine, but the God who loves us and molds us into his own image. A God who weeps with us as we weep for all that has happened in this country the last nine months. For those who have died as a result of COVID, for those in hospital, for healthcare workers and first responders who have tirelessly and have placed their lives at risk to save others. God is present in all of it. Even if God may be silent, that does not mean that God is not fully present with us. Advent is a season also that fills us with great expectation. At the same time, it is also a time for us to strip away all that separates us from God and from one another. And by that process of stripping away, we repent of all that we have done and left undone in our lives by following our own way and not the way of God. Through this process, we hopefully come to a place of joy and grace, as St. Paul wrote about to the Corinthians this morning. The Corinthian church was very similar to what we find in faith communities all over this country today. People who hold strong opinions, and who want to see things done their way. But when this happens in any faith community, it creates conflict. Paul this morning, though, does not address the conflict that was happening in Corinth, but instead offers words of encouragement and of appreciation for the faith community in Corinth. Listen to this entire lesson again. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Paul this morning is not focused on the conflict that he later addresses in 
as I understood Corinth, but instead sees the bigger picture and sees the potential that is present in that community and offers encouragement for them to believe in the power of Jesus Christ in their lives and in their common life as a community. He begins with these words, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace. These are in short supply these days in this country. We are a country on edge, and people have withdrawn into their various camps, and instead of working together, we see people digging in, and instead of offering a way out of all our troubles, we see people offering grievance upon grievance. So when you hear the word grace, what comes to mind? For many of us, we might think of love, and that is very true, for grace is about love. But I also believe that grace can also mean that we are willing to give people a chance with an idea and not automatically judge that idea. It is giving each other a break after a long day instead of pushing and pushing them to bend to our will. We have seen a lot of this the last four years and we are weary and we are depressed. During this Advent season, let us look within and renew that this idea of grace and peace as a way of building up the community instead of tearing it down. Finally, I wish to offer an invitation. That is, not to rush the next four weeks to be in such a hurry to get to Christmas. Consider the next four weeks as a gift to slow down from the busyness and instead take time each day to listen, to wait, and to pray. To let your interior lives take precedence over the external. Heaven is a time to keep alert for the coming of Christ, the cosmic Christ we celebrated last week. To be alert, though, requires each of us to do the hard work of meeting God and Christ, maybe, just maybe for the first time. This is not what popular culture teaches us. I'm asking us to seek God, the God who is revealed to us in the scriptures and the breaking of the bread. The God who judges, but also offers mercy. The God of love, as well as the God who calls his people to account. Advent is a time to be honest and truthful with ourselves as we await the second coming of Christ. This hard work hopefully opens us to be molded by God to be his people today. In the words of that, in the words attributed to the Christian mystic Saint Teresa of Avila, Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. You are the eyes with which he looks, compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. You are the hands with which he blesses all the world. You are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. Keep awake, keep alert for the signs around us, not only of the evil that lurks within us and in our country, but also keep alert and awake to see the God, see God in our midst during this season of expectation and hope and penitence. Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being of the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified by conscious Christ's life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory and judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who the Father and the Son is worshipped in the Lord, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one Lord, Catholic, and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us, God's people, pray. O Creator God, we are your clay. We are all your people, each of us molded by the work of your hand. Gather us from the four winds and restore us, that we may be relieved of our unbelief, awakened by your light, and never again turn away from you. O Lord of hosts, Keep us alert and prepared. Creator God, enlighten the souls and steady the hearts and minds of all who govern across this earth. Straighten the path to peace and unity with local, national, and international friends and adversaries alike, guiding the path to justice, mercy, humanitarian, and planetary care. We pray especially for Donald, our president, Tom, Chris, and Lisa, our members of Congress, John, our governor, Matt, our county executive, and Mike, our mayor. O Lord of hosts, keep us alert and prepared. O Creator God, embrace and sustain all who are seriously ill or facing desperate times that they and those who give support may know your warmth, light, and encouragement within. We now join our hearts together to pray for those in need. O Lord of hosts, keep us alert and prepared. O Creator God, console and inspire us with the knowing that your kingdom is welcoming with glory all who are now entering your gates and awaiting all who are transitioning from this life. We pray especially for Max Bell, Rudolf Hengel, William McCain, and Robert O'Neill. O Lord of hosts, keep us alert in your faith. O oh, Creator God, we pause in this moment to offer you our other heartfelt thanksgivings, intercessions, petitions, and memorials. O oh, Lord of hosts, keep us alert and prepared. O oh, Creator God, rekindle our hope in this waiting time especially in all who are anointed in your name, to lead us to your truth that is our Christ. 
We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Kevin, our bishop, De David, our rector, Lloyd, our rector emeritus, Emily and Peter, our associate priests. We pray for the people of Nigeria and for St. Peter's Church, Smyrna. O Lord of hosts, keep, keep us alert, alert and prepared. prepared. We continue to pray this day for those who have died from COVID-19, for those who are in hospital, for loved ones, friends, for all who experience such heartbreak during these times. We also pray for President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris as they transition to their government beginning in January. O Son of Man, Master of the house, keep us awake with joyful anticipation, preparing our souls through prayer and repentance for the sudden unknown time of your return to claim us for eternity. We ask for the Holy Spirit, our heavenly advocate, and the divine architect of all that is, who together with you reign as one God, forever and for always. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only you will will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you.
God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs into everlasting life, that when you shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink, of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him and with Him and in Him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as 
our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, for us, Jesus Christ. This is the table of the church, but of the Lord. He is being ready for those who seek Him, those who love Him, and those who want to love Him more. So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little or our questions of faith. Come, you who have been here often, and you who have not been for a long time or ever before. Come, you who have tried to follow, and you who have failed. Come, not because the church invites you, it is Christ who invites you to be known, fed, and loved here. Behold what you are. May you become what we receive. Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, Heavenly Amen. Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short and we have, do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of the one who made us, the one who loves us, and the one who travels with us 
be with us and those we love this day and always. Amen.